Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com with another weekly video. You're going to notice a little different look in the in the video today and in the final weld especially and let me explain that. I met a, a new friend a few years ago. I was giving a talk down in Florida about TIG welding 4130 chromoly tubing. It was at a sun and fun, a fly-in thing for airplane folks and a lot of airplane, you know, kit builders and things like that, Experimental Aircraft Association people, they're doing their own planes and they're interested in TIG welding 4130 tubing. So I was giving a little talk on 4130 chromoly tubing and, and while I was at the booth, Roy Crumrine and his girlfriend, who's now his fiance, came up and I met him and we, we got to know each other and we kept in touch. Now we're good friends. So now we are kind of collaborating, uh, tag teaming, if you will, on some videos and the reason why is I just want to bring better videos. I can only do so much on my own. I only got so much time. So I've kind of tag teaming with Roy. He's welding some and I'm doing some of the arc shots and the final product is going to look a lot better than anything I've ever done and I don't want to take credit for that. That's Roy. So let me that, I needed to get that out here up front. So I'm going to be bringing you lots of these videos. It's it's regular Regular joints, like, like you would do in school, like regular lap joints in the flat and vertical and overhead, outside corner joints, T-joints, butt joints, all that stuff, and we'll just see where this goes. So today is a, is a lap joint, a 2F lap joint. 2F means horizontal fillet weld, and so let's dive in. All right, here are the basic settings. You can hit the pause button here if you want to look at some of this, but I'm just going to move on here. This is 11 gauge cold rolled steel, sanded clean to clean bright metal and wiped with acetone. We're just fusion tack welding in a few places here just to make it quick. doesn't really require any filler rod for tack welds. You can also just fuse weld the very ends instead of the corners here if you want to uh, do it that way. If you do want to use filler rod, it looks something like this. Just holding a pretty tight arc, make sure both members get puddled a little bit, shove a little filler rod in there to bridge the gap, and done. We're just getting at least one tack on every corner, and for the purposes of just practicing lap joints, that's just fine. And we're ready to get started. You're going to position the, your hand and position the piece in a, in a position that's comfortable to you, which is usually sort of tilted where you're welding toward yourself a little bit. It gives you a better line of sight on the puddle than a straight sideways type weld. Get all positioned and initiate the arc and we're ready to start. And we're trying to, for, for, for most of this little video here, not quite melt all the way up to the corner of the piece. We're trying to keep it about three quarters of the way. If you're not careful, if you use too much amperage or too long an arc or hang around in one place, it'll definitely wander up there. Like you can see here, even though I'm going fairly quickly, if I'm not careful, the, the top of the puddle wanders up to the top and then makes it sort of uneven. It's not really a defect or a problem. It's just an observation. It's just if you want to have a nice tight bead down in there, if, you're, if your project or uh, requirements of the job don't require you to weld all the way up to the edge and you want a small bead with little distortion then this is the way to do it just you know that's why we're using small wire right now just to keep the bead small and keep it from going completely up to the edge now some jobs are better off uh, done with the bead completely filling the corner in other words the leg size of the weld completely going up to the corner of the metal and we'll do a little bit of that in just a minute all right, another look at it here. Taking a few dry runs before we get started. You notice also this piece is wiggling around just a little bit. Uh, it'll be better if we put a little weight on it or clamped it down to the table or something, and we'll show that again later too. Once again, we're trying it right now to keep the top of the bead down below the corner, keep it from melting all the way to the top. And so that does require a tight arc. It, it requires a fairly quick travel speed and uh, some accurate placement of the filler rod in order to keep that bead that small. Here I'm just going a little slower and feeding a little more uh, wire in there and taking it all the way up to the corner. And here I've, I've increased the size of the filler rod which makes uh, if you need to go all the way up to the corner that makes it a little bit easier. You don't have to feed quite as much rod. Just depends on the requirements of the job and whether or not uh, you know welding a small bead would help in preventing distortion. We're showing you a lot of options here because there are a lot of different requirements on different jobs. Okay, let's go back to the, the small bead now. Another look on that. 
pre-flow with the foot pedal, scratch with the tip before you press the foot pedal and then light up. Only take just about three seconds to get that puddle going and get your filler wire aimed and then you can see we're dipping at just about once per second and that gives a I guess a medium travel speed certainly not what I would call slow here and you can see again the bead is just going a little more than halfway up the uh, 11 gauge material we're going to continue this one all the way out with a little different look at it here you can see how the angle of the electrode kind of increases as you get toward the end of a weld and that's not necessarily bad but just something you want to pay attention to you want it not to get too much of an angle toward the end even though the tendency is as to twist your wrist as you as you travel and we're holding the post flow on the very end of the weld there that's a very good habit to get into and here this is putting a little aluminum chill bar on the top to keep it from moving around as we add filler wire in there and push it around and it's just a good practice if you have something like this also really pulls the heat out and uh, really helps the the weld as far as discoloration goes okay so that's what a weld looks like when you do everything right you clean the metal you hold a good tight arc you keep the tip of the rod shielded now let's look at what happens when you don't do those things right the three things that most people do wrong that screws up a lap joint like this too much arc length too much torch angle and not shielding the hot tip of the filler rod with the argon taking it in and out of the argon and getting it oxidized and then introducing oxides into the puddle and it makes it flow like crap and just makes it look like crap now i'm using 100 amps here that's actually enough but with a long arc and too much torch angle it's not enough see i've got a boomerang shaped puddle it's fusing into one member and the other but the metal is not flowing into the root of the joint down into the bottom of the joint like it should now here all I've done differently is tighten up the arc, tighten up the angle and keep the tip of that rod shield and you can see how much things go way better with the same exact amperage. Same everything, all I did is cure those three things. So that's something to remember and be thinking about when you're learning how to do lap joints, T joints, butt joints, it doesn't really matter. Same things apply to just about just about any application when it comes to TIG welding. You get this if you don't do those things right, and you get a lot better looking weld if you do. Well, hey, thanks very much for watching. If you hadn't hit that subscribe button yet, feel free to do that so you won't miss any of these. I make a video every single week. Also, visit the Weldmonger store at weldmonger.com.